This is a demonstration of wattle and daub made with bamboo. Wattle and daub is the world's oldest known building method used all over the world many thousands of years. And here we're using bamboo. You could use small saplings or branches woven together in the same way. We've peeled off the bamboo on the surface, the green surface. It would be good to, to treat the bamboo. There are different ways of doing that you can see on the internet. We just nailed them together. The small nails about five eighths of an inch long. Tack them together. It's fairly quick and easy. This bamboo has been split with a machete. And this sample is about 22 by about 3 feet. And you can see how it's woven. This one goes above, this one goes below. And, and actually, these should alternate above and below. But because it's a small sample, we just nailed them on top for, for speed and convenience. We're using vetiver grass for fiber to help hold the plaster together, help reduce cracking. And we're just chopping it up into small pieces. If you're doing a large quantity of this, work on top of a tarp so you, you capture all the pieces that you're chopping. Here I'm just chopping directly into a bucket just for speed. We're just making a small sample. Okay, first I showed you the frame, the bamboo frame. That's the waddle. And then this is the plaster or the daub. So the, we're demonstrating here how to make our plaster. We're using clay soil. You can also use clay. The dried clay will mix more easily. We're using some rice holes to add some fiber and insulation. We're using the chopped vetiver grass for fiber. We've screened out our sand to get rid of these, these larger larger pieces. We don't want those in the plaster. You don't have to screen the clay or the clay soil. We did it just to so it'll mix easier. Add a little water in the mixing container and then keep a bucket of water handy. We don't want too much water. We want a stiff mix that's not too wet. To find the best recipe or ratio of ingredients, you have to experiment with your soil. What we're using is roughly a two to one clay soil to sand. So two clay soil to one sand, and then we'll just add some fiber until it looks good. And just enough water to get the right consistency. We're going to add the soil a little at a time to let it dissolve in the water. This will save your save labor mixing. And put it in in layers. That also saves mixing. We're just making a small sample. If you're building a house, you'd want to make this in large quantities in a pit or on a tarp. We'll 
add the fiber at the end. This looks like a pretty good mix here. Let's dry it out. So just take the, the plaster mix by the hand pool and work it into the, the, the frame here, the waddle. You could have another person on the other side doing the same thing, pressing from the other side. Don't want it too thick, otherwise it'll crack. So, looks like a good mix. Now you can smooth it out. Looking good. This is what it looks like on the back side. If you smooth this out and add some more plaster, it will help it bond to the to the waddle, make it much stronger. Here's how we screen the sand using fishing net. This gets rid of the rocks. This is especially important on the finished coat. This ratio of ingredients worked perfectly, so we're going to do the same recipe for the next batch and add it to the back. That will help it bond together. And the only, no, only way to know your recipe is to test it out. Okay, one more thing. Ready? The only way to know for sure is to test out your local materials because the soil will vary from location to location. You can pre-soak the clay, that will save some mixing. At a time, so that you don't add too much. And if your sand is wet, then you have to add less water. you could mechanize the mixing process with a mortar mixer. We're, we're always trying to demonstrate the low-tech, low-cost methods. A lot of people mix the earth and plaster with their feet. And now we're doing the back side and by putting it on both sides, it will lock together. This uh, waddle, it acts as your frame and it creates a mechanical bond. So these long fibers 
are basically wrapping around the waddle to, to lock everything together. We're supporting the back side so that the first coat doesn't fall off. And of course, if you're actually doing this, this would be a, a whole wall that's built solidly. This is just a small sample. This is ideal for interior walls that are thin, that don't take up much space. And of course, it's very low cost, virtually free. I've been a builder all my life. I have to say this is one of the best. This is one of the most amazing experiences right here. There's something very special about this. All of our ancestors all over the world built this way at some point in history. recommend this. This is a good way to build. If you notice, I'm applying it with an upward stroke to resist gravity, to help it stick to the wall better. And again, you can smooth this out, put a finish coat, one or two finish coats, make it real nice looking. Hundreds of millions of people lack affordable housing. They're living in shacks made of cardboard and whatever scraps, pieces of things they can find. And so some people may not realize how important this is. This is a very good building method that even if you have no money at all, you could build yourself a pretty nice little home.